topics. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar about building a sustainable test data architecture. My name is Martin Urbach, and I will be your host and presenter for today. But before we getting started, let's quickly set the stage for this webinar. You will all be on mute, so but we've allowed you some time at the end of this webinar for some questions and some answers, which you can easily submit through the chat dialog of this webinar. We're scheduled for roughly 45 minutes, and I'm sure we will be done by then. And with that, let's get started. A little bit of background on myself. Um, I've been working for roughly eight years now in the area of test data management. Um, and I've tried to help companies out in adapting to uh, and evolve into a more uh, provision, the easy provisioning of test data. So having the right test data at the right place, it, in the right place at the right moment. And with this experience behind me, let me be, be honest by saying that at the end of this webinar, you won't have a final test data architecture for your organization. Because that's just impossible. It's not a one size fits all. Your mileage will vary. What I will try to give you during this webinar is a set of questions you can answer yourself to get started. And these, uh, these questions and answers will inform the decision making process process which will <clears throat> which you will need to take when designing and provisioning test data to your lower environments. These same answers may also contribute to the business case for investing in your test architecture. Let me give you first a quick introduction on Topprof. Topprof is a software vendor which specializes in test data management and we're one of the only such vendors in the world who focus exclusively on this topic. And since releasing our solutions some seven plus years ago, um, we've experienced an evolutionary process as we help our customers out, many of them which are global but also national brands. And we help them out by adapting and adopting the more agile uh, software development practices or CICD uh, application development practices. And we've learned over that last couple of years that success really does breed success, both for our company, both for the customers as to ourselves. And as a company, we believe that test data must be easily accessible and readily available. We take this, we make this happen with our top of runtime platform. This is our provisioning platform and our automation platform. This central framework helps to make your life more easy in test data management. And under that prof runtime, you will see um, other products like subset, privacy, and that prof analyze, which help you out. And these core products will make your life easy to get compliant to privacy legislations or create smaller representative subset out of production for testing. It's this combination of solutions which makes it possible to eliminate bottlenecks and accelerate test data provisioning. So with that being said, and without any further delay, let's start with the real content of this webinar. So <clears throat> before designing a house or an office building, an architect will always extensively interview his clients to determine their wants, their needs and their aspirations. What are the grounds we're building upon? Is it, are these rocks? Is it clay? Is it sand? Uh, do you enjoy gardening? Do you like the sunshine? Maybe you enjoy Star Wars more than maybe a documentary or the other way around. It's important to get a little bit of a feeling as an architect what kind of needs and aspirations there are. Maybe you, maybe you like a more modern or traditional look and feel or science fiction above non-fiction. Um, and the, maybe the last also very important question, of course, is what's your budget? But these same principles also are applicable when designing a test data architecture. You can start to think about what kind of software methodology have we embraced? Is it agile? Is it still waterfall? Have we something in between? How many people will work with the test data? Maybe you can split them even to the number of developers or QA people. Um, what kind of applications do you use? Is it commercial off the shell or are, are these in-house developed applications or even maybe SaaS? What kind of databases do we have? 
are these RDBMS, relational database management systems like SQL Server or Oracle, um, or is it NoSQL? What kind of database, where are our databases stored? In the cloud, on-prem, maybe hybrid? I don't know. There are a number of questions you can ask yourself, of course. But in any event, the answers to these questions will and shall have an impact on the eventual test data environment you're designing. And like an architect, of course, you must take care on the needs and demands of your customer. But there's a but. I think like an architect, you should also be confident in count selling that sometime, sometimes not everything can be achieved. For example, building a house that's fully earthquake proof simply doesn't exist. If you even want something like this, this will come at a cost and maybe this will be more costly than all allocated budget you just reserved. So maybe you can build a fully earthquake proof house, but it's pretty, pretty expensive. And in the end, almost anything, of course, can achieve with a blank checkbook. But a blank checkbook, especially in software testing, won't happen so often to our experience. Maybe it's even as rare as mermaids and unicorns. But decisions should be made and they will be made in the end. And you probably won't get to do everything you want. But you should compromise and prioritize and you should compromise and prioritize based upon what's really important what's maybe mandatory and what's less important desirable um, and you can simply see it as like building a house if you really enjoy uh, the sunshine maybe you want a house and a piece of uh, uh, a piece of land that's specific on the south end of um, that you have a lot of sun on the south but you can also have Maybe you are even also want two bathrooms. Maybe you can't do both. So at that point, it's the same counts for a house as for a test data architect. You should prioritize and compromise. But while I also was preparing this webinar for today, um, I soon came to realize that I simply couldn't answer all of the questions that I posed myself. Um, so I also I immediately start to think to organize maybe a test data architecture part two. Um, and if you have some questions maybe and you start to think about, well, I also have some questions, maybe you guys can also think about it, how we could solve it. Please put them in the chat dialogue as well and we can add this as input to our next webinar about test data architecture part two. So that's something that you can also do and what we will try to do after this webinar as well. But when I prepared this webinar, I also started a little bit more pragmatical and I asked myself a pretty simple question, a question you could also pose yourself. And that's the question, what kind of tests are we really performing? What kind of tests are we executing in the end? Um, and what of all of these questions, of all of these tests that we are executing, which has the greatest need to proper and realistic test data. So there are a number of tests that I came across, of course. Uh, I thought about unit tests, integration tests, functional tests, regression tests, a number of tests that are present right now. If you search even Google it, there are even a, a larger number of tests that could be possibly executed. So this is definitely not a definitive list. But I think that the tests that I'm just showing you right now in these slides are maybe the core approaches. And there are no doubt that there are even more, but I think these cover the core approaches, what we try to achieve with testing. What I then try, uh, did is I mapped these to the need of test data that is representative to production. So what I try to do is to make sure that the different tests that we have, I try to map these to the level or the need that you will have to representative test data to production. So how representative should test data be if you compare it to production? How high is that need? So I made myself this <clears throat> mapping. 
So I map these and you can see it on the uh, below. I map these from low to high and the representative to production. So there's a level of representative to production. Sometimes it's already maybe you can think about it's a full size copy. I don't necessarily mean it's a full size copy and we do also have solutions that you don't need to work with a full size copy, but we will touch base on this topic as we go along. Um, but what I do mean is that it's um, it, what I do see in many cases it that full size copy using full size copies is still an industry default. And I think we could change this around, especially if you take a look at the DTAP environment, the development, test, acceptance, and production development and environments, which we still see. So when we take a closer look, I try to I try to make three different components. Um, like that, we have a low need to have test data that's representative to production, a moderate need, and a high need. And if you take a closer look, especially to unit tests, for example, then we take a closer look to the multiple different tests. I really think there's a low need to have test data that is representative to, pro uh, to production. In most cases, we see that unit tests are executed most commonly by developers. Um, and in truth, all they really need is enough data, so a module that they developed and of an application that that, that, that part is functional. Um, and that's that's the all the test data they probably need for a, to execute a unit test. What we do see nowadays still is especially in um, the industry default, the DTAP environment, for example, is that in most cases or in some cases still a full size copy is used also in development environments. And this is a shared resource. So multiple developers are working on a, a single database to execute their unit test. And this could, especially in working closely together with each other, could have an adverse effect on other unit tests or other developers that try to execute maybe the same unit test or maybe a little bit different unit test, but they use the same test data. And the test data or the data content could be changed in such an extent that the only real solution is a full restore of that development database. And we can all imagine the time that it costs and the opportunity that we've lost, um, the number of costs it in total will take to restore that full size copy. Another one, which may be a bit of a surprise where I positioned it, um, is integration tests. Maybe it, you should think of it in the first glance that it should be have a higher need to have production data. I think in the end this is a little bit debatable, especially if you take a close look to the definition. And the definition which I used um, was the definition I found on Atlassian.com. That's the definition I used. Maybe you will find an, another definition and for that reason the level or the need to have representative test data will change. But this is the uh, definition I found and I found it on the Atlassian.com website. Is that integration tests verify that different modules or services used by an application work well together. So what it specifically in this specific definition is, is we what we want to make sure is that application can that, that it can query query the database itself. There should not always be the need that the database is fully available with transactional data. You only want to make sure that you're able to connect to the database from the application. You want to test the service in the end, um, not the data in itself. And of course, you probably need the data to make sure that the application is running. So you will have a need for reference tables that should be present in the database. Otherwise, your application won't function, um, but you certainly don't need every row in every table for every database in your application architecture. So that's the reason why we put the integration test in the moderate level. Now I leave one in between, so I will come back to that later on. But now I want to talk about some tests that have a higher need on test data. Test data that is more representative to production than unit tests and integration tests. And these are, to my perspective, specifically also uh, regressional testing, regression testing, or functional testing. And although they are somewhat similar, there are some differences. And for this specific webinar, it's interesting to look at the dif these differences. It almost is the same, but they are a little bit different. So, and these have also subtle impact on the differences on the level of test data you need that's represented to your test data requirements. 
So when we take a closer look to the definitions, um, regression testing is testing uh, is testing the previously deployed functionality of an application. And what we expect is that what used to work will keep working. And functional testing is with functional testing, at least what I also got from the lesson.com website is we will be testing new features of an application, so new features to all only existing uh, features. And with this in the back of our minds, the difference is that regression testing can well be executed against what we already have in production because we have already have existing data in our databases, so we could really use a production or production like data. We really need it to make sure that the functionality of an application is still working. And this is also very important from a QA perspective that you will have an understanding on the data that is needed to fully test a regression. Functional testing is a bit the same, but there's also a difference, a subtle difference, but there, there is a difference because with functional testing, there may be the need of new data content. A new version or new feature in an application might require the presence of a new column or a set of columns in one or more tables. Perhaps it also requires the creation or existence of completely new tables of set of related tables. And synthetic data, especially in functional testing, could be very helpful in supplementing the existing data in these functional tests. So you can add new data with synthetic test data to make sure that your functional test is also fully executed. So short conclusion, we really think that, especially for unit testing and integration testing, there is a less need, the level that it's representative to production is less if you compare it to regression testing or functional testing. And this is also something you can take into account when designing a test data architecture that works for your organization. Okay, think about it like this. But what's interesting is in these specific cases that, it, that has a high representativeness to production is that the need for test data that is that accurately reflects production data is of the highest, highest importance. So it's really important that especially in regression testing or functional testing that your test data is really representative for production. And we also think that in these specific cases, in these two tests, that generating synthetic test data from scratch is a risk, especially if you have a database that's not filled and you're filling a database from scratch, from bottom up, and you fill every table that's present in the database, that's a risk to do it with synthetic test data because you want to have a, a representativeness to production. The profile of data that you will be generating will be as how you design it to be, not what is present in the database already. That's the highest risk when you generate synthetic data from scratch in these specific tests. But then again, you could ask yourself the question, do you, for that reason, do you need a 100% copy of the production database? And this may be, it may be a bit of a surprise, but we really think it's not necessary. It's not necessary. You don't need a full size copy for regression testing or functional testing. Let me try to explain you. In most databases, you will see something like a normal data distribution. So which are the interesting test data cases to have a representativeness to production? These are the outdoor ed cases, right? These are the ones at both ends of this normal data distribution. And these are the interesting, in, interesting ones. They will probably have the anomalies, perhaps the unusual data, the data content you're searching for. Sure, you will want to have something in the middle, some customers with the broadest range of products or with the highest volume, but specifically what you want are the outer edge cases of your test data. And is that 100% of a copy? 
No, mathematically, it will never be 100%. In this particular example, it is 6%. But in real life, we've encountered customers creating a subset that's way less than 6%. So another test that we skipped, but this is in the middle for a moderate need, and that's performance testing. And for performance testing, I think this aspect of test data provisioning justifies a degree of having a full size copy of a production database available for performance testing. Maybe you could even you want to increase the number of data that's present in your database compared to your production database. But it's truly important and I can understand it, especially if somebody calls your organization, you want to make sure um, that your database is properly functioning, that your application is properly functioning. So you need to have some sort of volume to make sure that you can execute a performance test properly. But but specifically, the volume is important in performance tests. The, the representativeness to production is less important. So you won't need a, 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 a full representative set of test data to execute performance tests. You need the volume that is representative to execute a performance test. And this is also important, maybe this for, for the business intelligence group as well. So maybe these, these groups need a full size copy of the database but we don't see that much bulk updates be that are being introduced in an application. It's mainly select activities that needs optimization in performance testing. So drawing another conclusion. In most tests, you will see that the need of test data is, the, the need to have representative test data to production is very valuable, especially in regression and functional testing but we don't need a full size copy. Occasionally, some tests won't need test data that's representative, like in unit tests, integration tests, or performance testing. But in most cases, it's truly valuable to have test data that is representative to production. The two major things that I would like to discuss right now are uh, test automation and people. Um, and I will start with test automation. And these, is, these are also topics, especially test automation and people that you should take into account to consider when developing your test data architecture. And nowadays we see many organizations that are already working with test automation frameworks like um, Tricentis or Parasoft or Libwork, or they are using open source framework. There are also um, many of them. Um, and many of them also claim to have solved the test data problem. But in our experience, some of them made your life maybe even worse. I'm sorry about it. But why? Well, in most cases, we see customers using automated tests in functional or regression testing. I can truly understand it. Test automation is really rewarding in functional or regressional testing. Because in most cases, these are also your transactional systems where updates or new features can be important. And for that reason, it's really important to have the highest quality of software. So it's important to test many times and repeatedly to make sure that your business critical systems are working properly. It makes sense to invest in test automation from if, when you're um, executing functional or regressional testing. But to test these systems, it's important, especially in the functional or regressional testing, that you have test data that is representative to production. But in most cases, we see that test automation frameworks chooses the easy way out. Namely, they um, um, create test data and do it via the front end of your applications with com concepts like robotic process automation or emulating keystrokes and, and mouse actions. And what these frameworks do to create test data is in some cases, they first of all, create a new customer. So you have to think about your new customer. What kind of test do you want to do? The test case that you designed, you will generate the specifics. 
you will generate specific criteria where the test case should be applicable towards. Um, and then you have your test case that's perfectly aligned for your test case, your automated test execution. After you created that one, then you can use it to automate your tests. So you will press start and then it will select that specific customer and it get executed and that's wonderful. And by automating the test, the test data case is altered. But what if the test fits? OK, let's try again. Then you should go back to the first step. You will have to create another one. Of course, this is a workable process, but there are multiple problems that 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 you have created that, is, that are more important than the cure that you try to solve. The first one is you might populate the test database with poor unrepresentative test data. And especially for regression or functional testing, this can be a real problem. The second one is even if the test was successful executed, it's not always truly representative for what you will find in production. And the third one I wanted to know is uh, the customer that you just created the first time is already there. So you should create a, a full new one. So now what you have to do, you have done quite a lot of work for nothing to my experience. What we think you should be doing in these cases is make sure that test data is sourced from production, or at least you will have a subset of production which is representative with a representative set of test data to production. And why? Because it's already eliminating problem number two. After you execute your test, you make sure that it's truly representative of what you can find in production itself. What's also important, and this is specifically in this slide, is that a test automation team should have its own environment. And often we see teams, test automation teams, that share the databases with other teams. And this is a major concern because automated test teams are executing tests repeatedly. And for that reason, they should be able to return the set of data to its original state before the test has been executed. At any given moment, they should be able to return to its original state. But if a test, they, they, test automation team doesn't have its own environment, this could slow them down, and your this will make this this will won't this won't make your automated testing ambition a success, because it isn't faster due to the fact that other teams are working on the same database, in the same environment. So a return to the original starting test data point isn't always possible because it will directly impact the others. Each team is at the mercy of the others. So with a, their own test database, they are able to execute the test repeatedly like you were willing to do so at the beginning of your test automation project. So what I would strongly advise you to do is to make a test database available for every team. If you have 10 test automation teams, you should have 10 database, test databases or test environments available. And I know this will come at a cost, but maybe this is just not, there's no other way around it, but there's simply no alternative. I think that's not the best news, I guess, but this could be foreseen. I really think so. However, there are also ways to make, to solve this requirement for a full size copy. You can think about um, um, maybe about data virtualization, but also about data subsetting. Either of these solutions will help you to create smaller test databases for a specific purpose, but each come with its own with it with its own pros and cons. Nothing more, nothing less. One major advantage over over subsetting is that it's quick and easy to refresh, and so you can easily return to the original start data point. Questions you could also pose yourself. Questions you can think about when you're designing your own test data architecture. To, architecture is how long may it take to refresh a full size copy or how long will it take to refresh a full size copy? How many team members and or individuals are, 
are, are available on a single resource and how many people will get blocked if we refresh the same test database? These are questions you could still ask yourself. The last major element before I will start and show you a basis, a strong foundation on how to build your test data architecture is number of people. Ultimately, what we all try to do um, is we want to develop environments or we want to deliver test data to the developers, testers, QA, and maybe even trainers. We provide their, the, the, the environments for them. And this is also a recurring element in the discussions we have with customers. We all too often see that there's a small number of databases available for testing. A real small number when on the other hand, the customer wants more agile software development, flexibility, quick releases through a CI CD pipeline. And this is a paradox. We always see that there are more people testing or developing software than that there are test databases or development databases available, which is not always a problem. But in most cases, this can be and will be a problem. Sharing a database across different pro projects is a problem. Maybe not as dramatic as I just told you, but in most cases, it is a problem when databases are shared. When you start thinking about designing a sustainable test data architecture, you must consider what the needs of your organization is for now and for the future. How many people are working on projects and what are their needs for test data? And even nowadays, especially with working from home, you should consider this and also take in account on the data security aspect as well as the time it takes to execute a test against a full size copy. So what you should be trying to solve in your test data architecture is reducing the overlap of actions that are performed against a database by multiple teams. Teams manipulating the same test data will slow you down or even block other teams or individual users. The very nature of their action may well preclude others from isolating specific test data cases in the same test database, since <clears throat> there is the danger that their data may be changed without their knowledge. And if you only knew how much time is lost by searching and finding the right test data, this is valuable time that is lost in delivering applications and upgrades or new modules to the business. And the same counts for the number of people as it counted for test automation teams. You can not simply give every team, every individual its own database. It's simply not, it's simply too costly. But what you can give to them is a set of test data that is perfectly aligned for the purpose they try to execute by using subsets. So other questions you can think about is who will be using the lower environments? What are the groups they are in? Are they in development, quality assurance, training, pre-prod? Can each group share a single resource? If not, who can share what safely with a minimum interruption in the event of an environment refresh? So you can, there are a number of questions you could pose yourself to deliver and designing your own test data architecture. Coming to a conclusion. At the beginning of this webinar, I said that there's no magic answer, only questions. And we asked a number of questions as we went along. What we have seen, however, is that there's a range of data requirements across the different IT functions, the different testing um, abilities that you try to solve. Um, and some need all data, but in most cases, you will see that the less data is really purely enough, a representative sample of of everything is not simply not necessary. Deploying full size copy of one or many databases for an individual or a team becomes really impractical, as we also saw. <clears throat> People, time, resources, and delays in inherent in scheduling test data and refreshes have a direct impact and cost to the business. But over the years, we've been trying to help companies out in 
designing and evolving their lower environments. And we've seen one particular um, architecture come to consistently come to forefront. And this architecture is what I just showed you real simple in concept right now. And this architecture says, says that it's only have one full size copy available for each production database. This is often called the master TDM environment. You can call it golden copy as well, or TDM master, or whatever you may call it. But this is also the only layer of the lower prod environments, which is subject to data privacy regulations, or GDPR, or any other privacy legislation, as you can see, especially in this test data architecture. What's also interesting to know is, I, know, I don't know if you're aware, aware of it, but Google uh, GDPR Recital 26. Google GDPR Recital 26. I have it on the other slide. I will show you later on. But it states, simply states that the principle of data protection of GDPR are not applicable to anonymized databases. Not many people know of this recital. These master TDM environments are typically made available as source to the lower downstream environments. And you can do that by using, for example, DOP of subset and DOP of privacy. Um, and all these tools can, but what's also interesting, these master TDM environments can also be used, for example, for performance testing, or can be used for, for the business intelligence group as well. But it's also the source for all, in many cases, your downstream environments. You can create subsets from databases that are appropriate for roughly every test there will be, from unit testing to smoke testing. Sometimes it might be a single database. Other times you need a subset of multiple databases in concert with each other with specific data related content. And all this is practical and doable. This architecture also delivers the concept of independence. Subsets can stand alone and are not dependent upon the test data master. Their refreshes will not affect anyone else other than the person or team calling down the refresh. Conversely, the test data master can be refreshed as required without affecting any of the users since the subset are self-sufficient. And all of this can be instrumented using automation service or self-service techniques. But maybe that's a topic for another day. And I just wanted to show you the recital. You can, this is the recital I just simply stated and I just copied it in full, but you can find this information um, by Googling GDPR Recital 26. It's not applicable to anonymous data. That's something I wanted to tell you. Um, and then I'm almost done with my webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will now take a look at the different questions that may be posed uh, in the chat dialogue. There are I, right now there are two questions that I see. Um, one of them is, can you please record the demo? Maybe I could mention the, this up front. Um, there's um, um, the full webinar is recorded, and I will we will share the recordings of this webinar with all of you afterwards. Um, what we do support, we do. Uh, there's also another question: Do you support uh, TDM? Um, we support a number of databases and a number of applications. Um, currently, and we have a partnership with EpiUse, and EpiUse is our partner in SAP TDM. So we currently, uh, that's one of the only applications we currently not directly support on SAP. Is there any additional reading about this test data management videos and Others all are also great. That's another question that I'm reading out loud. Yes, there are. Uh, there's an, uh, a lot of information. Um, you can find it on our website, uh, dopprocom resources There are a number of articles, papers, webinars that we uh, delivered in the past. And you can read uh, all the different informations. And if, if it's not good enough, please go to info at dotprof.com and post your questions and we will try to answer them. Um, 
And there's uh, one info, uh, something want uh, now again uh, the same question about the recordings. I already answered that one. And can I get a level of pricing of the tool? Um, sure, we can. Um, my colleague already uh, tried to answer them. If you go, to, if please quit post your question to Jerry at dotprof.com, um, and he will try to answer the question uh, that you just posed. Um, there's also another question. Um, do you have a nice diagram uh, on the test data showing a TDM architecture? We have, I have a picture. I don't know if it's a real diagram, um, but also in the paper where you could go, dopoff.com slash paper, there you will find some additional information and there's also a small test data architecture available. Um, but what we also sometimes do and what we can do is together with a customer, we do maybe sometimes a little bit of a workshop by and trying to create a test data architecture that fits your specific needs. So it's of course, it's a little bit more gen generic right now, but we do have uh, executed some of the workshops to design a specific uh, test data architecture that fits your needs. Uh, no. And uh, another question, which is always nice about um, do we uh, partner on TDM? Um, yes, we do partner. We not do all. Luckily, we don't do everything by ourselves. Um, we have a partner agreement and a partner program in place. So if you're willing to partner with Dubprof, we, we will enjoy it. You can um, um, please, I don't know if it's an anonymous question, but please send an email to us and uh, we will try to uh, get something in place for you to also maybe become a partner of Dubprof. Um, well, thank you for your time. I hope you all enjoyed it. I don't see any more um, new questions uh, coming to the Q&A. Um, if you have more interest, if you want something more, if you want to see a full um, demonstration of our products, we can surely schedule also something. So please go to our website or um, to go to or ask your question via sales at dopoff.com and we will try to arrange a, a demonstration and a presentation about what our capabilities are on a tool part. Um, so once again, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it um, and I hope we're able to see and help out some, some of you in the future. So thanks for now. Have a nice day.